light in the quiet of the the machine being off which is lovely after a while um we come back the next day and i thought it might be really useful to just review um how we got our results yesterday on our micrometer for both sets of thin section samples um if we look, let's have a look at the ones that worked the way we'd hoped, that, that ran actually almost perfect for our measurement system. Um, remember that our glass is 1.75 on the micrometer, 2.75 in reality. Um, what we did is we said, okay, 1.75 we're going to add 30 micron we'll set our stop or our mark to look for at 178 and what happened was with the with the good set of our lovely silty or sandy silt uh samples is that they ran down to 185 and looked lovely I took them on down to 1.80 and I went, I'm going to check. I'm going to check. They look thin, though they look like they might make 178. So I took them off the machine and I went to the microscope and had a peek and they were done. They were done. You know, uh, for the majority of both slides, we were sitting at the pale yellow pale yellow to just a little bit yellow and in interference colors which says to me you know just above 30 micron so a good result what we'd hoped for you know the discrepancy of, uh, of 0 0.2 that is 1.80 minus 1.78 leaves you a discrepancy of 0 0.2 a 20 micron. Now that could be accounted for um, by the permanent mounting resin between the sample and the glass. That tiny, that, that very thin film of resin could have lifted our sample by 20 micron off the glass. That's reasonable. I like that explanation and I believe that, that that's good. And we ended up with a lovely um, result. The thing to remember, even though this is a very lovely measurement system, what makes it perfect is you, the thin sectioner and their eyes. You know, we can set up all sorts of maths, and we do, to use, you know, the machine. But ultimately, ultimately, the, the thing that makes the decision is the thin sectioner. If you see samples going thin, forget the math, stop the machine, and have a look, and check your interference chart, and trust you trust you because i've seen all sorts of things happen over the years you know and i do try to use the, the math to help me but ultimately it's always me so the bro is not something much to the students regret that i can teach that you can teach and just put something in at one end and say okay machine do it it still needs the human touch the human ability of decision absolutely um and and another reminder is the more slides you run from a site the more you understand what they look like when they go to thin section you'll understand the colors you'll understand um what to look for in weaknesses. The more you run of something, the better. It's a much harder job for a sectioner like me to run 
one set, six samples from the site. I have to start Stop the Machine. It's stuff I've never seen. I don't know. I have to use the machine to help and guide me, as well as the court's interference chart to tell me when those samples are done. So ever so quickly, let's go to our double slide samples. And they are beautiful, but what a challenge. What a challenge. Look at the size of that quartz pebble. You know, we're not talking even millimeters now. We're talking uh, centimeters. And I wager that's probably five centimeter in width. Dividing a light buff context uh, to a dark organic softer um, sandy silt with our rocks. So we tried the double slide trick and it did work. But the math is a bit odd because we said, okay, we've ground off our slide and we're going to, we're going to change wheels at four mil. And we put the fine on and we said, let's, let's give ourselves a buffer zone. If we say our stop mark should be 178, we're going to stop at 185. Way over the mark, just to check the interference colors. And when I did, they were done. They were done. Interesting. So if you take that difference, 1 eight five as a stop mark to what we projected 1.78 you get a difference of 0 0.7 or 70 microns 70 microns of thin section now that doesn't make a lot of sense to me um again let's try let's pretend that our you know, our resin mount is going to be at least 20 micron. So then we're saying our thin sections are 50 micron. But the interference colors at the most would tell me 40 micron. And yet there are some, you know, that I will have to hand finish down. But really, I can't explain that much of a difference except that when we try to put here we go the press block on a slide on a our permanent mount slide which we then fix to the top of the one mil sample on another permanent mount slide we made our double slide sandwich it just pressed it slightly higher than normal. It pressed it in an odd way, but whatever happened in the sandwich afforded us in the end to get reasonable samples, reasonable thin sections. And um, sometimes the physics can't be explained. Um, I'd be open for comment on this, but this really um, reinforces my earlier point. The thing you must trust, do not set a machine and say, machine, you do it. Trust you, trust you. And I saw that those samples were going thin at 185 and I said, let's stop. Let's stop and look and they were done. They were done. So it was me in charge. And that's somewhat, I don't know, it, it, to me, because I've done it so long, um, that gives me confidence. I wouldn't, I feel less confident knowing the kind of materials, the variability of materials that we have run over the years. And, you know, you've looked at that on off the bench. I always trust myself over the machine. The machine is a good guide. It's my friend. But at the end of the day, 
it's you who are training you on your material. Um, I think that's a good place to stop, actually. Um, we're going, we just have a few more videos to go. Um, I'll give you a little, a little review on hand finishing. And then we've got to go through cover slipping. And then I think the last couple videos will be going through cleaning the machine and going through the parts of the machine. And then we're there. So I think it's absolutely a wonder to me. This is, this was the last Earth Slides thin section to be made in Cambridge by me. The last section on the machine down here. So now I'm handing it up to you. Uh, I will miss it. I will actually, but I'm ready. I'm ready for you guys to have the journey yourselves. And, and as I say, I'm here and available. If you need help, you know, just give me a ring. Um, but it is a good journey. It's a good journey to take. You're going to learn a lot, a lot and have a lot of fun with it. Okay.